it's so important that we are looking after our well-being and mental health at this time and finding ways to build it, not only for ourselves but also within our families or children's and youth groups. These five short videos are part of a series looking at the five ways to well-being which has come from evidence-based research and highlights key ways we can improve our well-being. The five ways to well-being are to connect, to be active, take notice, keep learning and give. This video is going to look at giving. We'll look at why it's important, what the Bible has to say and then some fun challenges and activities for how you can put this into practice for the context you're in. So why is it important to give? Helping others can have a positive effect on our own mental health and well-being. Baking a cake, sending a surprise present in the post, helping around the house, giving your time. These are just some of the ways that we can show and give kindness to those around us. It's been found that committing an act of kindness once a week over a six week period is associated with an increase in well-being. I love the book by Charlie Maxey, who is a Christian and wrote the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse, which has some powerful illustrations. And one says, nothing beats kindness. It sits quietly beyond all things. Evidence all suggests that helping others promotes well-being of all ages and can be particularly important to the development of social cognition in children and young people. When we give to others, it can help us to feel part of something much bigger and helps to give a sense of purpose, focusing on the needs of others. Dr Gary Chapman, author of the New York Times bestseller and pastor, presents a simple truth. Relationships grow better when we understand each other. And there has never been a time where we have needed to understand our friends and family better, especially those that we are living with. Gary explains that everyone gives and receives love differently. These ways of expressing and receiving love are called the five love languages and include the following words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time and physical touch. Love languages can be applied to all relationships, whether that's within a marriage, your relationship with your children, teenagers, friends, colleagues. It's how we show those around us that they are valued, appreciated and loved. And understanding the way in which that is going to be communicated the most effectively and received. For each of us, there is at least one language that we prefer and we often give out of. I encourage you to have a go at the short quiz. Complete it as a family or as a group of friends, a youth group, and share your results so you can show those around you how they are valued, appreciated and loved. So what does the Bible say? In Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39, we read, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no greater commandment greater than these. God calls us to love those around us with compassion, generosity and kindness to be his hands and feet, to love our neighbour, whether that is physically the person next door to us or in the more general sense of others that we know, whether that's family, friends, our church family, the person on the counter at Tesco's, our teachers. We're called to show God's love with those we interact with. We often don't know the difference that we can make. Even just a smile or a word of encouragement can make a huge difference. God has given us all different skills, talents and gifts to be able to serve and be a blessing to those around us. Maybe you love to cook or bake or you're great practically, you're creative or you just bring that word of encouragement. God gives us these good gifts, however small we might feel they are, not that we might cling on to them tightly, but that we may be able to share them with others. And as we do this, it shows the heart of our Father to others, his love, his power, and advances his kingdom. As we give to others and show them love through this and by our actions, we are imitating God's love and that love that he has for us. As 1 John 4 verse 19 says, we love because God first loved us. If we read the well-known account of Jesus feeding the 5,000, we see the boy who gave his two fish and five loaves. 
He gave all he had, yet God blessed it and from his giving fed 5,000 people. When we allow God to use the gifts he has given us and generously give to others, he can bless that. As we read in Acts 20 verse 35, it's more blessed to give than receive. How could you use your gifts to give generously to those around you? Perhaps as a church or as a children's and youth group, there is a way in which you can practically serve your community at the moment. So what would it look like for you to give to someone this week? With each video, there'll be a set of challenges to help you to be able to do this within your family, your, with your friends, within your children's and youth groups. However best it works for you, take these challenges and adapt them. So challenge one, complete the love languages quiz and share your answers with your friends and family. Challenge two, how can you give generously? Write a kindness token for something that you can do for someone and carry out that act of kindness during the week. Whether that's writing a letter, baking a cake, helping around the house or simply saying thank you to someone. Challenge three, Think about how you could give to your neighbour or wider community during this time, maybe as an individual, a family, or as a youth group, or even a church. So take these challenges and have fun with them.